Buenos días, buenos días. Bienvenidos a la casa de Dios. You wonder what I'm saying? It's good morning, good morning. Welcome to the house of God. It's good to have you in the house. Let's make our way to our seats. It is always good to be in the house of God. It's to give Him glory, give Him praise, give Him honor. <clears throat> We're blessed to have you with us. So it's going to be an exciting morning. The Lord has a great word already prepared for us to receive it today. Uh, he's calling on us to come into his presence. Last week we spoke about entering not just the gates, but to be able to enter into his courts with praise, and we did that. We went to a whole new level last week. Thank God for that. And he's carried us all through this week. I know we've uh, eaten a lot. We've had some good family time. We've had some, maybe some changing weather up and down. That's got my throat a little raspy, so I shut my voice down in a few minutes, but I can never stop praising God. So whether my voice doesn't do it, that means the rest of my body has no choice but to figure out a way to praise. So that means let's go ahead and stand up and let's figure out a way to praise. My voice may not be there, but my feet will be there. My arms are there, which means I can raise them, which means I can shout out to the heaven where they, my help comes from the Lord. So today is the day that we go before his presence. We seek him, we worship him. So whatever is within you, give him all that you got in you. Let him flow from you. For he's worthy. Our God is worthy to be praised. We're alive and well. We're in the house of God because he called us to be here this morning. So let's worship. Let's praise with everything that's within us. In Jesus' name.
believe we're doing Christmas songs already. Eh? <laughs> Let me 
Touch me and you know me. Familiar with all my ways. You have laid your hand upon me. Such a knowledge you can't contain. Where can I go from your spirit? your presence oh cause if I make my bed in the depths if I go up to the heavens I 
Oh, oh, oh. 
worthy of praise. And we come to you today, Father, just to give you thanks for all that you've done. Lord, as we were singing that song, we're just counting your ways and the days and how many times, Lord God, over and over and over. You look out for us and how you love us and watch over us. You're with us through everything. Yes. We really can say, Lord, that we can give you thanks in all things. Yes. Right there in the middle of it. <laughs> we give you thanks. And knowing that even in the mess that we walk through, yes. what the enemy means for harm, you work together for good. Yes. That's the way you do it over and over and over and over and over and over. We are thankful for your mercy. Your scripture says it's new every day. We receive that reset of mercy today. And that your love endures forever. It's constant. It never leaves us, never forsakes us. Your love is constant. It's permanent. Thank you. So we come to you, Father, today just to tell you how much we love you. And how thankful we are. We are blessed. We are your children. Yes, yes. Lord, the air that's in our lungs right now to be able to push the words out of our mouth, Lord. Praise us to you by the very breath of our lungs is given by you. And the pulse in our veins and the oxygen that's in our blood and the life that's in our blood, it's you, Father, it's you. And Lord, left unto ourselves, we destroy ourselves. Left unto ourselves, Father, is death. But Lord, you are life. You are life. And we thank you for your life. And we thank you for your light. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for your promise. We thank you for your presence. And we thank you for who you are in us and through us. And Lord, you've not left us as orphans here, but Lord, you have put your very spirit inside of us and your spirit is upon us and we thank you Father, you've given us your word and you speak to us and you walk with us and you lead us, your very word says as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God and you prove that even Father with the ability to hear your voice you say my sheep know my voice and you confirm who we are over and over and over and over and over, we thank you we thank you we praise you, worthy of praise. You are great. You are great. We thank you. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Won't you be seated? good seeing everyone this morning. Glad that y'all are here. Good morning. You know, I, as we were worshiping, you know, we're talking about the breath of God, how it's his breath in our lungs that every breath we take is, you know, from him. Our very heartbeat is from him. And it, it reminded me how Paul was talking about the body of Christ, how, you know, we're his body his hands, his feet, his legs, uh, every single part, we're his body. And Jesus also said, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am. And guys, where the body is, that's where the life is at. Because where the body's at, where, in your body there's a blood flowing. And if you're alive, there's a blood flowing. And when, you're, when we're all together in one accord, in one body, His blood is present. His blood is here. And that's where the life is at. That's where the life is at. And so the fact that you're here, you're going to be getting some life this morning here at the Freedom Center Church. So I'm so glad that you're able to make it. Hope you all have been having a great Thanksgiving uh, week. Of you, everyone gained like 5, 10 pounds? No? Maybe, maybe 20. Maybe, <laughs> maybe 20. Some, some of y'all maybe ate the whole turkey or something. I don't know. Some of y'all maybe still eating turkey sandwiches. 
or something. But we're so glad that you're able to make it this morning. And those of y'all who are streaming live, thank you for being with us. We're so glad that you're here. Wherever you're at in the world, we're so thankful that you're able to come join us this morning. And I know we're somewhat of a large church family here, uh, but if you're with us for the very first or second time, would my first and second timers please stand up? We just want to welcome you to our church family this morning. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. And, uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Uh, uh, to just remain standing for one second until our ushers give you uh, a bag from our church. Uh, in, that, in that bag, there's some information on us, and there's a card that if you fill out with your information, uh, and give it back at the end of service where the big TV screen is at the back. We have a little something for you guys uh, just to show our appreciation that you joined our family this morning. We hope to see you again. Thank you. And I believe I am tag teaming with the venerable Pastor Lee, Pastor Clarence. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's always a joy to take the offering. Amen. I want to read you a verse out of uh, Exodus 35, verse 29. The Israelites brought a free will offering to the Lord. All men and women whose hearts made them willing and moved them to bring anything for any of the work which the Lord had commanded by Moses to be done. What in the world is a free will offering? Well, that's an offering after I've paid my tithes. Praise the Lord. I've been faithful in that. And then I've included even more than that. I put a little extra in when I pay my tithe as an offering unto the Lord. So the church can do as it wills with that. But then once in a while, the Holy Spirit just prompts me to give an offering to somebody or some ministry. And uh, usually I've learned now, don't give second thought, just do it, you know, no matter what the amount is. But a free will offering is just exactly what it says. You're in, you're in covenant with the Lord, but the Holy Ghost is speaking to you to be a special blessing to your church to what, whoever he directs that offering to. So I say that because on the 10th of December, we're going to have the opportunity of blessing our staff here at the church. Everybody give a hand for that. I, I, I'm excited about that. Well, Holy Spirit want me to read this to you because sometimes you ask, well, what is the staff doing every week? Oh, they are constantly keeping watch over our souls and guarding our spiritual welfare as men and women who will have to render an account of their trust. I'm glad to know that my back is covered by the staff at this church. Amen. Pastor Greg and Linda and Reuben, Leonella and Linda and Tom and Charlie and everybody, Terry. I'm glad that they're praying on Monday morning for every one of our requests. If it takes three hours, that's what it takes. So I would encourage you on December the 10th, we will do a free will offering, and I hope that we'll richly bless that. Oh, let me pray. <laughs> hold your tithes and offerings. Father, as we hold our tithes and offerings in our hands, we're so happy. We're so blessed. We just thank you for the homes that we live in, the food that we eat this past Thanksgiving, for the clothes we wear, the cars we drive. We are so blessed, and we just praise you. We thank you that we walk under your favor. Thank you that we're a blessing also to everyone that we come in contact with. In Jesus' holy name, amen. What's going on? One that you want to listen to. Good morning, church. I'm so glad to see all of your beautiful, smiling faces here after Thanksgiving. Everyone's out of their turkey coma, and we are back here in church, so it's good to see you. Let's jump into the announcement. So all my ladies out there, get excited. We are having our girls' night out. Christmas edition coming up this Tuesday. So are you going to be there? You should be, because I'm going to be there. I'm going to invite all my friends from the grocery store, from the gym, from work, everybody. So be here at 6 for some food, and then we're going to start the worship and all the ministry and all the fellowship and all the learning stuff at 7. So come at 6 for food and 7 for spiritual food. <laughs> yeah, so come join us for Girls Night Out this Tuesday. Be here or be what, church? Be square. 
Our Ministry of Help team meets on the 27th, which is tomorrow at 7 p.m. in our Bible Connection classroom number one. We equip caregivers to minister. So if you feel called to do that, if you feel like called to serve and to help people out in your church that need help, we would love to have you join us tomorrow, again at 7 p.m. For more information, you can contact Pastor Ruben. All my men out there, we did not forget about you. This Friday coming up, we have our men's prayer at Kelly's Country Cooking. Woo, woo! So if you are out there and you are a manly man, a man of valor, a man of faith, we want to see you Friday morning at 6 a.m. getting ready to pray, getting up early. You know, the ones that wake up early to pray are the most spiritual I've heard. So join us for some food, some spiritual food. We'll see you there. Well, I won't be there, but, you know, you'll see your friends. So that's all I have for you guys this week. I love you guys so much. Have a blessed week, church. Why don't you stand with us? You were the world at the beginning. One with God, the Lord Most High, hidden glory and creation, now revealed in you our Christ. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without. Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. Why could we separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ.
thankful. <laughs> Give thanks in all things. I mean, that's partly what we're going to look at today. Um, I'm calling today's uh, message, Strengthen Yourself. Strengthen Yourself, but don't drop your guitar. That's my favorite guitar out of all of his guitars. I call that one the Bumblebee. It's all right, okay. It's going to lay hands on it. <laughs> Actually, it is. I'm not joking. That's my favorite guitar out of all of his guitars. That thing stands out. Besides look, sound-wise, I mean. But uh, 1 Samuel 30. I want us to look at 1 Samuel 30. And uh, we're just going to read um, several of the verses here. So you just kind of catch the drift of what's going on. Um, in case you're not real familiar with the story, this is actually one of my favorite stories out of David, and um, just incredible um, faith that he walks in and trust that he walks in. And I really believe this is a, a good word for everybody in the room, for what you might be going through, for what you might have gone through, or for what's coming. Hello. <laughs> Have you ever been in great distress in your life? It's kind of what this is about. And then what do you do when you're in great distress? David finds himself in great distress. 1 Samuel 30. Then it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag. And on the third day, and the Amalekites had made a raid on the Jev and on the on Ziglag and had overthrown Ziglag and burned it with fire and they took captive the women and all who were in it both small and great without killing anyone and it says without killing anyone but keep in mind David and his men they don't know that <laughs> they, they don't know anything except for that their village has been ransacked and that their families are gone it says that they carried them off and went their way in verse 3 then David and his men came to the city. Behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with them lifted their voices and wept until there was no strength in them to weep. You ever been there before? That's not a good place. Weeping until there's no strength left in you to weep. You've cried every tear your tear ducts could push out. You're done. And you're just sitting there with dry eyes. With no strength to weep anymore. Verse 5. Now David's two wives had been taken captive. 
Ahinoam and the Jezreelites and Abigail, the widow of Nabal and the, the Carmelite. Moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him. Now, keep in mind, this is his people. <laughs> uh, talking about killing him now. I mean, you have to keep in mind where David's come from. David has already been selected to be king. He's been anointed to be king. Saul is still king, but this anointing is on David. And it came to a point where the people would say that David, Saul has killed his thousands, but David 10,000. Jealousy came over Saul. Anger came over Saul. Saul wanted to kill him. David has fled into the wilderness for his life. Now he's got Amalekites who want to kill him, Philistines who want to kill him, Saul who wants to kill him, and now his own men who want to kill him. He don't have a friend in the world. For all the people were embittered, each one, because of his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Woo. Now, think of what kind of moment this is. And David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Everybody say that. And David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And then David said to Abathar, the priest, the son of Amalek, Please bring me the ephod. So Abathar brought the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? And he said to him, Pursue, for you will surely overtake them, and you will surely rescue all. Now, last week we looked at feelings, right? Feelings. Da -da -da -da, feelings. And I, I think... Uh, I think we will hold on to that thought of feelings as we go through this because in this situation, our feelings are many times set in motion by circumstances, right? <laughs> and we are created as beings to emote. We are emoting humans. That's what we do. And, and many times, circumstances fit all the, you know, the different emotions that we walk through. We go through all kinds of emotions. And as I said a few weeks back, I don't care. We could take a poll today. We could try to pick who we think is the driest, uh, most uh, unemotional person in the room, right? But you have Publishing Clearinghouse show up at their house and say, you're going to get $5,000 every week. I'm bringing this check. All of a sudden, woohoo! right? You would do it, right? I would. I'd be elated to get $5,000 a week from anybody. <laughs> I guarantee you, you'd be hopping. You'd be skipping. You'd be dancing. You'd be excited. See, when things go well, we emote feelings that are associated with things going well. But when things aren't going so well, then we tend to emote feelings that are associated with the circumstances of things not going so well. Matter of fact, the very word emotion, take the E off of the front of it, and what do you got? Motion. Emotion set us in motion towards some direction. And our circumstances oftentimes is the muscle that's driving us in those different directions. Feelings. We could be cruising right now with joy, but we could just as easily be cruising with sadness or cruising with madness or gladness. Any of those emotions will send you a different direction. We could describe our emotions many ways, but whatever that description would be, we are actually describing a motion of which our soul will take. What direction will it go? In the natural we can find ourselves in a whirlwind driven by the winds of circumstances. That's what circumstances become. A blowing wind, and depending on how bad or how great those circumstances are, will determine how strong the wind is. It's pushing you with your feelings and with your emotions. Our emotions oftentimes are circumstantially based. It's natural. This was the situation for David. David had been at war with his, uh, out at war with his men, fighting, returns to camp, and as he's coming into camp, he looks in the distance and he sees black smoldering smoke coming up in the direction of Ziglag. And already, you can imagine, they're getting unnerved. And now they begin to go in a full gallop to get back to the camp. And when they get back to the camp, everything's burned. 
Uh, it doesn't mention livestock. So either they stole the livestock or they slaughtered them. If you can imagine that, you might even have the, the smell of death in there and looking around hoping not to find a family member there and not finding any family members realizing they've been taken captive they're gone they've been stolen from us so imagine the emotions that are running through them right now their homes are ransacked burned their families are gone and in this moment and you talk about this is some kind of a moment it's a moment you wouldn't want to ever walk through and now here's David, wanted by Saul to be killed, wanted by the Philistines to be killed, wanted by the Amalekites to be killed, and now even his own men preferring him to be dead, surrounded by his most loyal people, and they want him dead. Keep in mind, all of David's men also have just lost their families. They're experiencing the same whirlwind of emotion and circumstances. They've experienced great loss. Circumstances have driven their emotions to a place of anger and to a place of violence towards David. Circumstances have driven even David to a place that the Bible describes it as great distress. Anybody ever been in a place of great distress? And I can tell you in relation to this story, most times, and I can tell you from my own life, if anything I would relate in my life that comes close to great distress, it's been related to family. <laughs> and we probably experience great distress more so in the relationships of our family than we do any other place. And here is David and his men experiencing distress. Their families are gone. Circumstances, sometimes circumstances, can drive you to a place of great distress. And David's been hit by a double whammy. <laughs> a double whammy in that David has experienced the same great personal loss. He's lost his family. He's lost his possessions. But David is also under great personal attack because not only has he lost his personal possessions and his family, but he's being blamed for the loss of everybody else's family and possessions. He's in a, he's in a pickle David is under the distress and the emotions driven by circumstance. And unfortunately, in life, there is no pause button, right? There's no pause button here. Don't you wish life had a pause button? I, I think one of the coolest inventions, I wrote in my note, I said, I think the DVR is one of the coolest inventions known to man. <laughs> because, you know, you can be watching something, maybe you just didn't hear it that well, and you can rewind it. It was in real time, right? And you rewind it, turn the TV up so you can clearly hear what they said. Now, last night, we, we've been working on our house, and praise God, when you walk into the house, just look to the left. Don't look down there. Just look to the left. Because <laughs> to the left, our formal living room and dining room looks normal. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! But as you keep walking, everything's else a mess. But it's getting close, getting very close. So thankful. But we were, uh, the last of the taping and floating really has been in our bedroom and our bathroom. And I was in there doing that yesterday. And I had the TV on and I had a John Wayne movie on. And I can't even remember the name of it. I think it was called The Horseman, I believe. But anyhow, um, you know, in most John Wayne movies, I, I really can't think of many John Wayne movies where there's not some woman involved, a damsel in distress, right? Some kind of love edge there because you got to have that for the wives to tolerate going to see the John Wayne movie with the husband, right? So you got to have a little bit in there. I don't know if y'all have ever been there. We went on Valentine's one time and, and uh, went, she picked the movie and I'm sitting there paying for the tickets. And I said, ma'am, is this movie any good? Well, I think it is. I said, does anybody get killed in it? Uh, no, I don't think so. Does a gun go off? You know, does something happen that's exciting? You know, there was nothing of a guy related. It was a chick flick, right? You know, so I think that's why they add that element into some of those John Wayne movies. And so it's one of those typical storylines that it comes to the end where, where John Wayne is, he's, he's, uh, fallen in love with this woman who at first they were hostile towards one another but now they love one another but he's got to ride off into the sunset and leave her right but he's in this final moment before he rides off into the sunset he's telling her that he has fallen in love with her right and 
I have to be honest, at that point, I've checked out. I'm not listening to any of that, you know. <laughs> the war stuff's over with, and I'm not really interested. It's just the ending, waiting for the end to come, move on to something else, you know. And, but unbeknownst to me, my wife in the next room is listening to that. And so it gets to that point where John Wayne has said his spill, you know, like, you know, I always want you to know I've fallen in love with you, right? And, and, uh, and she goes, what did he say? Oh, I don't know. I went and got the remote, <laughs> backed it up, right? We're in real time, and I barely like, well, put it in reverse and listen to it again. And she got to hear the little love language that went back and forth, you know? Pause and rewind. It's an awesome feature, right? It's become so much a part of our life that I, I, I have to, honestly, it's a natural reflex. I'm in the car listening to 610 AM sports radio, and I'll hear him say something, and I thought, oh, that's pretty interesting, and I'll reach to press reverse, you know, I'm like, wait a minute, it doesn't work for that, you know, it just doesn't work for some things, and it doesn't work for life, there's no rewind, there's no pause button, no, there's just is what it is, <laughs> circumstances of life, circumstances of life, David didn't pause in this moment, to encourage himself David just stopped in the midst of it his circumstances did not change things were still a mess everybody still wanted to kill him but in the midst of it he stops and encourages himself he encouraged himself in the Lord even though the circumstances were still pressing on him, even though his family is still missing. Life didn't come to a standstill for David. It's just this distressful accusations and all this anger hurled at David. It had not ceased, so there was no pause button. But while he was in it, he just stopped and he began to encourage himself. I think that's why Scripture says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything, give thanks. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Doesn't mean everything's going to halt or pause or stop for you, but in everything, give thanks. It's God's will for you. So here's David at an ultimate low. He's in one of the most distressed moments of his life, at least up until this point. And what does he do? He encourages himself in the Lord. And I'm, I'm not going to suggest to you that David got off his horse and started thanking God for all of the distress. That's not what he did. But what David did was to realize that the only source of help that he had was God. Amen. That was it. Amen. David very well may have gotten off his horse and simply, I believe what he began to do is redirect his stress to trust. <laughs> I look around, I got distress. I'm going to redirect that to trust. God, I don't understand this. God, I don't know why everybody is after me right now. But my hope and my faith and my trust is in you, oh God. That's what he's doing in the midst of all of that mess. He's saying, here's familiar words that's come out of his mouth before. He says, some may trust in horses, some may trust in chariots, but I will trust in the Lord my God. That's what he began to do, encouraging himself in the Lord. And the truth is, even those that he is leading and surrounding him, wanting to kill him. They've misplaced their trust because they've put their trust in a man. Foolishly trusting David instead of trusting God, who's the only source of hope that we have. Amen? See, the first step in encouraging yourself, I'm going to give you three things. First step in encouraging yourself in the Lord, real simple, turn to God. <laughs> turn to God we turn to a lot of things trying to fix our problems trying to give ourselves comfort in the midst of our mess you're not going to find it unless you turn to God trust only in him no matter what it looks like no matter what others are saying your only prayer is in God isn't that the truth I mean uh, guys I, I don't make any bones about it I, 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 I own firearms and I'm very protective of my family, and I'm all for that. But I'm, I'll be honest with you. When I go and I check the doorknobs, and I got plenty of guns and plenty of bullets, but when I lay my head down on the pillow and go to sleep, I'm no use to protect my home. God has to do that. 
he always is the protector. No matter what, he's the protector. No matter what, he is my trust. No matter what, he's my hope, my source, my supply, my life. No matter what, I can try to bear a sword and protect myself, but I have nothing if I don't have him. Nothing. Nothing. See, part of the definition of that Greek word where it's talking about distress used in that passage, it literally means to, to be distressed, but it also includes with it to be bound, <laughs> to be tied up. That's what distress does to you. If you are greatly distressed and you're not trusting in the Lord, you are bound and tied up to those emotions, to those feelings, to that distress. And you'll stay bound to it until you allow the Lord to cut those shackles that are holding you down because he is the only source of hope that you have. David was evading the ropes of bondage that his emotions were attempting to bind him with by turning his trust back to God. And there's no correct posture to this, whether he was on his horse, off his horse, kneeling down, standing up, or laying prostrate. There's no proper position for this. There's no correct method of time, whether it's in the morning, early, or late at night. Simply come to a place that you recognize in that distressful event that's upon you. Throw off the shackles of distress, cutting loose those binding ties with trust. God, all that I have is from you. Lord God, apart from you, I really can't do nothing. Boy, I say that all the time, and I mean it with all my heart. Apart from him, I can do nothing. God, you've got this. <laughs> you've got this. You're the only one that can guard my heart. You're the only one that can guard my mind, Lord God. You're the only one that can guard my family. You're the only one that can protect me, Lord God. You're the only one that can bring me through this. I trust you. That's the first step. Turning to God, trusting Him. Second one, the second step is encouraging, of encouraging yourself is cling to truth. Amen. Cling to truth. See, David may have lost everything in the natural. He may have lost his family, his possessions. He's even lost the loyalty of those trusted men who fought with him. But David has not lost truth. Amen. He's not lost truth. David encouraged himself. See, the Greek word used in that for encouragement means to strengthen, prevail, harden, be strong, become strong, be courageous, be firm, grow firm, be resolute. See, David would find no strength in his emotions. He'd find no strength in the thoughts at the, of the moment that were being generated in his head. The only thing that's going to give him strength is to stand on truth, period. See, the real war that's going on is not his family being hauled off. The real war that's going on is what's going on in his head. That's the real battle. Everything's been ransacked. Everything's been stolen from him. But the real war is between feelings and truth, between emotions and truth. See, David's hearing all the talk. They're hearing all these things. You imagine what they're saying. They're, they could be saying things like, you know, how stupid of you to lead us away and leave our village unprotected. We had no men here to protect our family, to protect, to protect our kids, and we just left them unprotected. How stupid that was. All kinds of accusations being hurled at David. No telling what they were saying at him. Blaming him for everything. And he could listen to all the talk and he allowed allow all those thoughts and all those feelings to circulate in his head. Or he could say, stop. No. I'm not listening to that. Stop in the midst of the mess throw out the binding untruth and cling to the freedom of truth it's the truth that sets you free untruth is binding and ties you down you see because for, for david first samuel 16 10 through 11 for david thus jesse made seven of his sons pass before samuel but samuel said to jesse the lord has not chosen these and samuel said to jesse are these all the children? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, and behold, he is tending the sheep. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, with beautiful eyes and a handsome appearance. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And then the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. And Samuel arose and went to Ramah. See, David is anointed 
David has experienced the hand of God upon his life. David has been chosen. David's already been anointed to be king, and the Spirit of the Lord is upon him, right? So David can stand on this one truth. Lord God, I know you didn't bring me out here in the middle of this desert, in this wilderness, just to slave me. You have spoken these things on my life. You have brought me this far not to fail. You see, that's a truth that you can stand upon. David gave him a promise. David had a promise. David had presence upon him. God spoke into his life of who he would be and what he would do through him. David had promise to stand upon. David had truth to stand upon. David has stepped off that warring horse and David now kneeling before God in the midst of his circumstance, trusting God and entrusting God, shaking away the lying thoughts and clinging to what God says. See, you know why that's important? Because God cannot lie. God cannot lie. Isaiah 48, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever, forever forever it's permanent so what does God say what does God's word say if his word says he'll never leave you nor forsake you you can count on it if his word says what the enemy meant for harm God works it together for good you can count on it that word won't pause because of circumstances it will carry you through the circumstances that word won't change your circumstances but this isn't about your circumstances being changed this is about you being changed see it's about you being changed there have been times in the midst of my feelings of of failure or disappointment feelings of discouragement yes I've had those same kind of feelings hello I'm human and I hold on to God's promise for my life I both both hold on to his written word and I hold on to those things I've experienced through him and I hold on to even those prophetic words that I know have been spoken into my life. I hold on to those words and I cling to those words. And what I often do when I have a disturbance in me, this is what I do. I just pray in the spirit, guys. I just pray in the spirit. I pray in spirit until something changes in me. And what I said in the first service, is the best way I can describe it, I pray in the Spirit until I feel solid inside. <laughs> you know, you understand what I'm saying? Because beforehand, I was feeling some anxiety. I might have been feeling like uh, I'm not good enough or I'm not, I'm not worthy or I'm, 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 not, I'm a failure, all these kind of thoughts that we run through our mind and in our thought life. And then I just say, stop! I'm not letting that in. Lord, I know your promises upon my life I know what you say for my life and so I began to stand on that I just began to pray in the spirit and and it might be sometimes I kid you not I've had it where there was trouble brewing I had this stressful moment coming and I don't even know what that is yet but I can sense it and I just begin to pray in the spirit until that anxiety is gone till the nervousness is gone till all those feelings are gone I want them flushed out till I feel solid and right inside that's what you do and I believe that's what David was doing he was encouraging himself in the Lord and he's stopping in the midst of the mess and he's not moving forward until he is right inside encouraging himself in the Lord David is aligning himself with God what God has spoken over his life and what God has done already through his life and he's focusing himself to respond correctly to the circumstance See, prayer is intended to inquire of God and set you in the right motion. Because <laughs> this still is about motion. You're still going to come out of this thing with some kind of emotion. You know, righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. If you get set right in the Spirit of the Lord, you're going to have some kind of emotion flowing through you. And what it should be is joy setting you in motion. How many of you know it's better to be in motion through prayer than in motion by feelings and circumstances? Hello. (laughs) Set me in motion, God, through prayer. Set me in motion as I pray. 
So your first thing is you turn to God. The second thing is you cling to truth. And the third thing is the third step of encouraging yourself in the Lord is to declare what has been inquired. <laughs> declare what has been inquired. See, David has inquired now from God. And the Lord has spoken. But that's not enough. Now he must stand up and declare what the Lord has spoken and act upon it. That's what he's got to do. See, David has fought a fierce battle in his mind. David has gone from great distress in his thought life to encouraging himself in the Lord through the circumstances. And though they have waged war around him, although nothing has changed circumstantially for David, his family, his possessions are still gone, yet David is encouraged. David encourages himself in truth and promises of what the Lord has spoken over him. David has already been anointed king. That... that and, and God has not carried David out to the wilderness to slay him, but to prepare him. How many of you know the wilderness is a preparation? See, this is just preparing David for a lot of other things coming on down the line. But he's preparing David right now. David's being groomed for reigning as king. And as David encourages himself in truth, then he calls for the ephod to inquire, what do I do now? See, this is the whole difference of why Saul is not king and not going to be king and why David is because David trusts clings to and inquires upon what God thinks what God thinks and here's David what do I do now he's saying I know your truth I know your promises but what do I do right now in the mess <laughs> what do I do shall I pursue Shall I overtake? You know, that would seem like a no-brainer. It seemed like it'd be a natural reflex to hop on the horse and go riding after those guys, right? Let's go take them. That's not what David did. David wasn't pursuing or trying to overtake until he heard the Lord speak regarding that situation. How many of you would like a fresh word declared to your situation? Yeah. See, that's what David was looking for. He was looking for a fresh new word spoken over that circumstance. And see, when the Lord begins to speak into that circumstance, once he has spoken, you know what you have to do? Move. Time to move. Time to mount up. <laughs> Time to go take back. You have to act. See, it's not just about declaring and decreeing. We certainly do declare and decree because we can look at what the Lord said. The Lord said, he said, pursue for you will surely overtake. He said, you will surely rescue all. I can decree that. I can declare that. It's in full alignment with what the Lord has spoken to that circumstance. But if David would have sat in that camp decreeing and declaring, he could decree and declare till he's blue in the face and nothing's going to happen till he mounts up and takes back. Amen. After all, God said, pursue, overtake. See, it's not about talking, it's about taking. <laughs> and it's from this posture of encouragement, this position of God's word that David gets up and he takes back what the enemy has stolen. How many of you would like to take back what the enemy has stolen? Yeah. Hello. I was having a conversation with someone earlier after the first service. and I'm a real nice guy, but I do have buttons. You know what that means, right? <laughs> that sounds like y'all got buttons too. <laughs> and getting stolen from, that's a button. I don't like getting stolen from. Amen? And the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That very first word ought to get under your skin. You should want to take back what the enemy has stolen. Yeah. Not to tolerate it. It's from this posture of encouragement. David begins to take back what the enemy has stolen. Before you make war, before you pursue and take, you must be encouraged in the Lord. Amen. See, David didn't make a move until he got right in here. Encouraged in the Lord. Amen. See, some of you here today might be walking through great distress right now. 
Some of you have possibly come out of great distress. And I'll be honest with you. See, David, this is the first of many that's going to be coming down the pike for him. He's going to have more days of great distress. But this is the posture of which he must respond to those days of great distress where he gets down off that horse and he kneels down before God, his maker, and he encourages himself in the Lord and he trusts him and he clings to his truth. And then he inquires, Lord, what do I do? What do I do? See, some of you are in great distress and this is exactly what you need to do today. You need to trust God. You need to cling to his truth. And you need to inquire. And when you find out what he wants you to do, act on it. Act on it. Some of you have felt like the enemy has come and stolen from you, even taken things, family, possessions, taken hope, taken dreams. It could be all kinds of things that the enemy's come to steal, kill, and destroy. And what you must do is say, stop. Stop. And before you entertain the next thought, stop. Don't take the blame for it. Stop. Don't take the insults being hurled at you from it. Stop. Don't take on the weight of the guilt. Stop. Stop in the midst of the mess. Stop. Encourage yourself in the Lord right now. Don't make another step this direction or that direction or that direction. You don't even know which way to go because you've not encouraged yourself in the Lord yet. Encourage yourself in the Lord. And out of that encouragement, you'll find your mind shifting back to truth, shifting back to promise, shifting back to clinging to His Word. You'll find encouragement. You'll begin to speak things in line with what the Lord is speaking over your circumstance, things that are fresh, things that are new for your circumstances, and you'll begin to act upon it. Not only will you be speaking and declaring to the mess, but you'll be seeing it put back. Hallelujah. Put back. David saw things restored as it, as it was before the enemy ever laid a finger upon it. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Here's the kicker. Only you can do this for you. I can encourage you. I can give you tools. I can give you points one, two, and three. <laughs> but you must act upon it. You must do it. It's the same idea of taking all thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. It's that same process. You must do it. I can't get in there in your brain and put a block in there and try to keep these thoughts out and these thoughts, let them in. Only you can do this. Only you can do it. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Only you can do this for yourself. Only you can do this. I can speak into your life, but you still have to act upon it. You have to stop, reel it in, and allow yourself to be encouraged in the Lord. You have to do this. And when you do this, good things come from it. Good things come from it. Restoration comes from it. Healing comes from it wholeness comes from it seeing the, what the locusts have eaten seeing it restored back what the enemies tried to steal away seeing it replaced Amen. encourage yourself in the Lord everybody stand Amen. We come to you today, Lord, and we just start the same place David would start, on his knees, just declaring, you are my God. You are, you are the very air that we breathe. You are the life in our blood. Lord, we would know nothing outside of you, Father. We, we, we would... Um, literally have destroyed ourselves. I know I would have destroyed myself apart from you you really are our savior you really are our redeemer and Lord every good thing that we've ever tasted or known has come from you and Lord even in the stuff that 
not so good that life throws at us. Even in that, you produce good. You produce good. God works all things together for good. Because you are good. <laughs> That's the only fruit that comes forth out of you is good. So, Father, we cling to you. We cling to your truth. We trust you. We cling to your truth of who you say that we are. Lord, there might be somebody here that you're just failing in some area of your life constantly struggling with some stronghold. Guess what the Word of God says? You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. See, that's who God says you are. Trust Him. Cling to Him. You might be walking through family issues. That is so distressful. It's, it's, it's it probably takes us to one of the, the, the lowest points of our life when we walk through broken relationships walk through hurt in the areas of our family. But Father, even in the midst of that, you are our God. And we don't have all the answers for all those circumstances that are hurled our way, but we trust you. And Lord, as that word says, in all things we give thanks. In all things, in the midst of our mess, we give you thanks and we praise you. But we know, Father, just to be standing where we're standing right now, we've only been brought this far because of you. And you didn't bring us here to fail, just as you didn't bring David to that point in the wilderness to fail. But, Father, you have plans for us and a purpose for us. And you will fulfill those things because your word is true. You said you will be faithful to complete that which you started in us and your word is true and you cannot lie and we know that to be true so we cling to your word God. we cling to your word we cling to your word and fathers we come to that place of clinging to your word trusting you father that our ears would be open just to hear you speak or to hear you speak something fresh something new to this circumstance or this situation. And I pray that even right now, today, this moment, there might be some here in this place walking through a, a stressful time, a, a difficult time. And you're needing a, the Lord to speak, the Lord to do something. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Cling to Him. Turn to Him and cling to His truth inquire of him as David inquired the Lord spoke and then as the Lord spoke David's confession lined up with what the Lord spoke it didn't line up with talk it lined up with mounting up on his horse and taking it back so Father Lord let us be mounted up Lord, on wings of eagles <laughs> as your word says Lord because you want to fight our battles for us and you want to restore all that the locusts have eaten. You want to restore what the enemy has stolen. We know that to be true. So we put our trust in you today. We thank you. You are awesome. You are awesome. Great are you, Lord. Great. to come forward as we close today. If you need prayer for anything, you need prayer to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need prayer for breakthrough. Lord, as the Lord's Word says, if one can put a thousand in flight to ten thousand. Let us agree with you in prayer. But I just want us to close today in worship, singing how great the Lord is. And, and if you need prayer, we want to pray with you. And I'll just ask and invite you to come forward as we're worshiping. That you'll come forward and let us to pray with you. But just take things to the throne today, okay? Take it to His throne. Encourage yourself in the Lord right now through praise.
and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Praise. to the, your truth and what you say regarding things what you say regarding circumstances yes. Lord, we'll cling close to your truth allow your truth to transform our thoughts taking all of the fiery darts that the enemy would throw at us all the accusation that the enemy would throw at us taking all the, regardless of where it comes from taking those thoughts captive all thoughts captive and allowing your truth to reign in us who you say that we are and we know who you say that we are we are your kids your word says as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God your word says your sheep know your voice just by the very fact of relationship and knowing you we have our identity in you we thank you for that Lord as we leave this place today we give you all praise and glory. And I pray for each person here, regardless of what they're walking through, what they've come through, what they might yes. be in the middle of, yes. <laughs> and what they don't even know. It doesn't matter, Father, that they would stay encouraged in the Lord. Encouraged in the Lord. And Lord, even when they sense things that might be approaching, so much can be altered if we just are tuned with your spirit and begin to pray in the spirit and allowing you father to solidify yourself inside of us so that we'll not worry or any anxiety so we won't react wrong towards circumstances and situations even before it ever gets here but father let us be found faithful lord that we would trust you with all our heart cling to your truth and inquire of you and act upon what you tell us to do faith without works is dead so father we want to hear what you're speaking act upon it. We want to be doers of your word. So we thank you for this day. And Lord, I pray blessings on each one as they leave this place today. Lord, you would be glorified in everything that we do, everything that we say. And Lord, that our eyes would be open and our ears attentive to kingdom assignments that you're giving us in the earth, speaking to others 
and to Lord to be involved in what you're doing in the earth. We praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.